On this episode of China Uncensored, China's AIDS villages. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. You know, China is full of AIDS. No, not the disease. China absolutely does not have an AIDS problem. No, the hard work of communist officials aiding the people. That's what I'm talking about. Like Li Keqiang, the number two man in China, traveling around the country, pausing from a moment's hard work to take a staged photo, inspiring all those he encounters with his reform-mindedness. Oh, ignore that photo. That's just uh, a haystack. Yeah, haystacks from a village in Hunan. It's absolutely not freshly dug up graves from a village decimated by AIDS that the government tried to cover up by paving over them for land development. That would be silly. I mean, Li Keqiang was the governor of Hunan from 1998 to 2004. Surely you're not suggesting that a guy involved in a massive AIDS cover up could end up as the number two guy in China, right? You've really got some nerve. Hunan province is China's breadbasket. Uh, rice basket? But in the early 90s, after several decades of natural and man-made disasters, everyone was pretty poor. But there was one resource the province had left totally untapped, people's blood. And so from 1991 to 1995, the government encouraged farmers to sell their blood, a policy thought up by a rising star in the Communist Party. <laughs> now, knowing that foreigners were a bunch of AIDS-infected, drug-using perverts, China made the wise decision to ban importing foreign blood in 1985. But apparently, Chinese people were pretty squeamish about donating blood because, according to Chinese medicine, it is the essence of life. So Hunan officials set up 200 licensed blood and plasma collection stations and offered about six bucks American for some blood plasma. A lot for the time. They would take your blood, extract the plasma, and re-inject the rest of your blood back into your body. A propaganda campaign ensued encouraging everyone to join. Farmers were told selling plasma helps maintain healthy blood pressure. It doesn't, but hey, it might. And I mean, women bleed every month, they probably have a few extra pints to spare to help the family income. That's actually what they thought. And like any mass campaign, the Communist Party leads the people on. It was a great success, until it wasn't. Collection stations were flooded, even the thousands of illegal, unlicensed ones that sprang up. Why, so many people were coming to them that they even had to start reusing needles over and over again. And to speed things up, the collected non-plasma blood was pooled together before being re-injected into happy peasants, leading to massive blood contamination. And when entire villages started dying off from some mysterious disease, no one told them what it was. But surprise, it was HIV. Probably if anyone had told them what it was or how it spread, or if there were any sex education in China, the situation probably wouldn't have gotten as bad as it did. As it is, it's estimated that over one million people were infected with HIV through selling blood. Although one AIDS activist, Gao Yao Jie, who was there at the time, thinks that number could be closer to 10 million. Why does she think it's so much higher? Well, I'm sure that even though she was there at the time, she was probably unreasonably biased by her time working as a gynecologist in the 70s and 80s, just because her orders at the hospital were to make sure no babies left the hospital alive as part of the newly implemented one-child policy. And so just because she was forced to frequently perform late-term abortions, she thinks there's some kind of government conspiracy to cover up the AIDS epidemic. <laughs> I mean, how could there be a cover-up? After an initial period of officials telling Gao to keep quiet after one of her patients tested positive for HIV in 96, they got right to it once too many people died to keep it quiet. What more do you want from a government? To prevent panic, they threatened AIDS patients to keep quiet, kicked out experts and journalists, and have obscured the numbers of deaths and infections. It was a great warm-up for everything they did during the SARS outbreak. And because of the stigma associated with being born in those AIDS villages, those who weren't infected don't want to move out for fear of discrimination, and those who are infected, because of the household registration system, can only get their once a month government disbursement of life-saving drugs in their hometowns. Clearly, the situation is contained. Please stop looking into it. Blood selling schemes had nothing to do with the spread of HIV. Blame it on drug users and prostitutes. So what has Mr. Li Keqiang, the man who did not cover up the Hunan AIDS epidemic, been doing to redeem himself since then? Well, he hasn't admitted that there ever was an outbreak because of the blood selling scheme, but he has been spearheading the AIDS awareness campaign by encouraging NGOs and volunteers to help contain the disease. 
But to be part of such a glorious effort, you must first be on the good books of the party. If you're anything like Hu Jia, the outspoken AIDS activist and dissident, then you should just play your part by getting harassed by police, spend some time in jail, and illegal household arrest while having a liver condition. That's what you get for trying to bring clothes and toys to families of AIDS victims. The only AIDS plaguing China is the AIDS of the communist officials making the Chinese dream come true. What do you think? Comment below or check out the Facebook and Twitter page. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.